Okay, it's official. Kodak has lost its mind. Hello everyone, my name is Josh from Videos by Josh, and I cannot fathom why Kodak would release a new Super 8 film camera in 2023 that costs this much. Like seriously, this camera costs as much as a high-end cinema camera from Sony, as a high-end photography camera. This is extreme. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I have to hold my... I don't know if it's anger or contempt, but the price of this camera, this film camera being released in 2023, is $5,495 USD. Now we've all heard of Kodak, the popular film company that dominated the video and photography landscape when film was still the most popular medium, but they've long since fallen out of favor as digital cameras, incredibly good digital cameras, are now incredibly easy to come by. But as part of my generation and generations that have passed, a lot of people feel nostalgic towards Kodak and their business, at least in the the film print side of things remains relatively stable. So when Kodak announced that it would be coming out with a new retro style film camera, a lot of people were interested in that retro technology because shooting on film does have a distinct look in video form. And ever since film fell out of favor in the 90s and 2000s, it's been kind of difficult to get your hand on like a Super 8 or a film style video camera. So I think there certainly was a gap in the market for a product like this. So Kodak began development on the Kodak Super 8 kind of hybrid film electronic camera about eight years ago and when they did the price was slated at only a few hundred dollars then in 2019 when they started to show demo footage from the camera the price rocketed up to an approximate twenty five hundred dollars and now finally Kodak says the camera is coming out 2023 we will have it and the current price five thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars American ridiculous but let's not just throw it away completely. Okay, so here's some details on the camera. It's going to be limited edition. And the camera is said to merge analog magic with digital convenience in the most accessible, easy to use film format ever invented, says Kodak. Now, their Super 8 camera is supposed to be the most advanced Super 8 film technology, and that's perhaps because nobody's been developing it other than Kodak for the last 20 years. The camera itself will come with a swivel adjustable four inch LCD viewfinder, which is really unique in a film camera to be able to view your film in an LCD, so props to Kodak for that. Extended gate widescreen recording, interchangeable C-mount lenses, which is really interesting, and the camera itself will come with its own wide-angle 6 millimeter interchangeable camera lens. Now, you have to remember that there's an intense crop factor on Super 8 film. The crop factor is 6.19, meaning that this 6 millimeter lens is actually a 35 millimeter equivalent full-frame lens, so there is some funky math to do for your interchangeable lens lenses on this system. For those not familiar with the C mount of lens, the C mount is a lens type most commonly found on 16 millimeter movie cameras and closed circuit television cameras. It's an older design that precedes a lot of the modern formats for lens mounting, but as a result, you have a lot of vintage glass out there that you could be taking advantage of. The camera comes in a unibody construction with vintage flair and aesthetics. It's got some modern features like 3.5 millimeter audio and a power button, the LCD monitors we discussed in a speaker, but it also has a lot of throwbacks to older film camera design, particularly in the boxy body reminiscent of older Super 8 cameras. And the case and kit, like all in one, it does look like a cohesive unit, like you could carry this around and you know, you have all your accessories and everything's protected. I think the product itself looks well thought out as a package. The camera will have over and under crank recording at 18, 24 and 36 frames per second, but you can only record audio at the lower of the frame rate. It does have some cool pistol grip handles, and honestly, the body style in general does make me nostalgic. It makes me feel like this is a cool-looking product, like a film camera. But honestly, it doesn't look that well-built. It looks cheap, plasticky, and if you were to ask me how much this costs without any other information other than maybe the specs of the film, I probably would have guessed $499.99, like maybe that's it. Now, what kind of film will you be loading into this camera? Well, Kodak says the camera accommodates 50-foot cartridges of motion picture 8 millimeter film. There's a bunch of different versions of Kodak film, Vision 3 color negative film stock, and several options for reversed film stock, including Tri-X black and white reversal film and Ektachrome. Now, the important thing to remember is that shooting on film does come at a cost. Every 50 foot reload of film is going to give you about three minutes of recording time at 18 FPS or 
maybe 100 seconds in its high frame rate mode and each reload is expected to cost around 40 USD so you better hope that when you're recording you're recording what you mean to record because this is going to be a pricey system of course people shooting in film already know that they're shooting in it for the film aesthetic so while I don't see the price of the film being an immediate issue I still think the price of the camera seriously is but of course for the price you're not just getting the camera you're also getting a pelican case uh, the lens uh, a hood some minor accessories, a grip, cleaning cloth, some some starter film and an instruction manual. I'm not seeing I'm still not seeing anything that's 59 that's $55,495. I I just don't get it. Now Kodak used to be a brand that was known for making film accessible to the masses, especially when film used to be incredibly prohibitively expensive. 8 mm film or Super 8 was birthed from a need to save money over traditional 35 mm and larger formats. So when 35 mm got too expensive to shoot, people went down to 16 and finally down to 8. The whole point of the 8mm format, in my opinion, is to make it more accessible to the average user, and pricing the camera at uh, $5,500 USD pretty much prices everyone out of the market for accessibility. This is a very expensive camera. In my opinion, Kodak should have went a different direction. They should have went the direction of common printer makers, where you make the printers themselves really cheaply, and then you charge good money for the ink. Kodak could have developed a system with a relatively cheap camera to get people into or back into the notion of using film, getting us into the ecosystem and the habit of shooting film on a cheaper camera, and then, you know, they could charge just for the film. They could make their money back making the product that they've been subsiding on for the last number of decades film, much like the printer ink solution, and then they could have provided us with a more expensive option to upgrade to down the line once we've invested in the system and we decide that we do love shooting on film again. I think that would have been a much more successful product strategy than what we've seen here. And honestly, the camera just looks kind of like a toy. Like, it's, it doesn't look like a professional tool. Like, if you pull up any number of offerings from the modern camera brands in both their photo and video categories, you'll see that the build quality just looks a lot better than what we've seen here from Kodak. And it's not helped by the fact that if you wanted to shoot Super 8, you can still do so by grabbing any number of film cameras off eBay for next to nothing and rolling on that. Of course, they won't be as refined. They won't have the digital integration. And in most cases, it could be difficult to find parts and support. But if you really wanted to shoot 8mm film, you really got nothing to, to lose with that route. Whereas if you go with this Kodak system, you have uh, a lot of money to be investing up front in this camera. And the camera itself has a... <sighs> It, are you kidding me? It has a f***ing micro USB charging cable. They couldn't even put a USB-C charging cable on this camera for $5,500 USD. We have to charge with micro USB. I don't know, Kodak. Like, like when I think of this camera, I just think, you know, like Kodak... It's a day late and a dollar short. Like, this is far too late. Uh, it's way too expensive. And I don't see very many people buying this camera other than people with the uh, disposable income and uh, willing to uh, indulge in the novelty of, of this product. Well, and while I am coming off, I know, uh, properly negative about this camera, I, I will say that I have nothing against shooting on film uh, or even developing a film camera in 2023. I think there's a market for it. I think people are interested to engage in that older format. And I think a lot of people have either nostalgic or romanticized ideas about what film video could be. There's a lot of great work that's been done on film. And I personally would like the opportunity to enjoy it again from a modern lens. But this won't be the way that I will be enjoying my film video. This is not good, Kodak. <laughs> I just want to kind of round it out with this comment, just so it doesn't get passed over, because I think I've been kind of flustered throughout this whole video. Is that the purpose of Super 8 film and smaller form factor film is to be accessible. And Kodak has often branded itself as the accessible consumer's method into film, video, or photography. And they continue to mention this camera specifically in the same breath as accessibility and, and making it, you know, more readily available film for the average user. And then to go around and to price it at $5,500 USD. This is 100% a pricing issue. If this camera came in at 500, may, maybe even a thousand, maybe even a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, maybe you sell it to schools, you get you get some people learning how to use film that way. Maybe I could see it, but the price is just so unhinged 
for this camera. It's so out of the realm of believability that it has become it has become popular to dunk on Kodak for talking about this camera now. Like people are are mocking Kodak for this, and I hate to pile on. I really do. But this is a price issue that Kodak has to fix. I'd like to see them succeed by releasing a camera that is more connected with reality. But until then, I will continue to criticize them for this decision. <laughs> so those are my loose and relatively frantic thoughts about Kodak's new Super 8 camera. So those are my thoughts. What do you think about Kodak releasing a $5,500 film camera in 2023? This is probably one of the most interesting products I've seen all year. I'm, I'm interested to hear your opinions on it. Leave your uh, opinions and leave your comments down below. I make sure to read every single one of them. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.